Music singing and dancing only becomes bad when it has a harmful or misleading effect on people. Music is made up of sequential vibrations, which affect the nervous system positively or negatively. Music can arouse almost any human emotion. If the music incites lust, violence and death, then it is of a negative nature and is in praise of the fallen angel, Iblis, curse him. If the music brings about peace and serenity, then it is positive in nature. The scripture's primary use of music is the restoration of the spirit so it can be prepared for meeting with the Most High. The prophet David was a musical genius, 1 Samuel 2 18. He was skilled with the oboe, chowl, and the reed, which he invented. He helped to heal King Saul with his music, 1 Samuel 16 23, 2 Samuel 6 5 and 1 Chronicles 13 8. He was also very talented with the lyre, which is also called a harp and the reed pipe. According to Genesis 11 5 it clearly states, and the Lord, Yahweh, who is Allah to the Mohammedans, came down to see the city and the tower. The fact that God had to come down to see what they were doing in Babel or Sodom, means he does not know everything at all times. Or, this is not the God but rather a God. The devil, a word used by Jesus, John 670, has programmed the average Nuwabian, Negro, so that whenever he hears the name Jesus, he automatically thinks of an average Caucasian who is about 30 to 34 years old. Isn't this correct? Now the same mentality is what keeps the average Caucasian and Nuwabian offenders from killing, assaulting, or robbing middle-aged Caucasian men. Why? Because he subconsciously sees him as Jesus and therefore respects him more than an elderly man. Check the statistics and the media for yourself and you will see that this is true. How many Caucasians between the ages of 30 and 34 do you see being attacked daily? The answer would be next to none. According to Webster's new 20th century unabridged dictionary the word world literally means, the age of man. From Anglo-Saxon origin ver, man and yildo, an age. So, when you are saying the end of the world you are saying the end of man. At length, when he reaches the age of full strength and attains 40 years, he says, O oh my Lord, grant me that I may be grateful for thy favor which thou hast bestowed upon me. The Holy Quran, Yusuf Ali translation. The Prophet Muhammad was 40 years old when he received his calling to prophethood. The Apostle Isaac, Genesis 25 20, and Esau were both married at the age of 40, Genesis 26 34. The Prophet Moses was 40 years old when the Sustainer gave him the Ten Commandments, Genesis 20. Now, if this is the age of responsibility, or of knowing, what happens when a person dies before this age? Will he immediately go to paradise for he has not yet attained his age of wisdom? How about if they are of different faiths? Will a Christian who is 20 years old not be held responsible for not knowing about Islam or not converting to Islam and be allowed in paradise? The Son of God called Jesus died so that you can be saved, John 3 16-17, people were confused about what else they should be doing after he died to go to a prepared place that Jesus spoke about in John 14 2. It becomes even more confusing nowadays because in the books of Matthew, Luke, and Mark, they all record something different about how to receive this salvation. If you believe according to the Bible, no one knows what must you do in order to be saved. Many Christians claim that faith in Jesus Christ is both necessary and sufficient for salvation. So, in other words, faith alone is required which John 3 15-18 supports. However, other verses tell a different story. This is obviously a big problem amongst Christians because whole denominations have split over these Bible contradictions. Mark 16 16 says that baptism is necessary for salvation, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That verse implies that faith is a requirement or else you will be damned. Thus, this raises the question, is faith alone required, or is it faith plus baptism? Churches are divided on this question, especially when considering infants and children who die before being baptized. The concept of limbo was invented while they were trying to resolve this contradiction. They weren't sure whether children were to go to heaven or hell. Some Bible verses such as James 2 14-15 says that works are required for salvation. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food, and according to your definition and opinion, the term works can mean anything from good deeds towards others, following the laws of the Bible and or the fear of God. Some so-called scholars interpret this passage to mean that faith and works are both required, or that faith automatically produces works. Others interpret it to mean that works alone are required. Who's right? Who's wrong? Because there are other verses such as Galatians 2.16, Galatians 3.5, Hebrews 6.1 and James 2.17 that state works and faith are both necessary and enough for salvation and they don't mention faith. 
All of these verses are from the red-lettered writing of your Bible, which you claim were the actual words of Jesus, the Christ. Can faith alone save you? Can faith plus baptism save you? Can faith plus works save you? Can works alone save you? According to the Bible and not your opinions, which one, two, or three of these qualify you to get to paradise? Now according to Ephesians 1 4-6 and Revelation 17 8, each of us was predestined for either heaven or hell before the foundation of the world. This means that no one can be saved unless their salvation was established from the beginning. If belief is required for salvation, then only those predestined for salvation are able to believe, Acts 13 48, 2 Thessalonians 2 13-14. If obedience is required for salvation, then only those predestined for salvation is able to obey, 1 Peter 1 2, 1 Peter 2 7 8. These quotes all state, or clearly imply, that God premeditated or predestined your salvation and damnation long before any of you were even born. So according to the very scriptures that you believe in, you can't be or do anything other than what you are predestined to be or do. This is telling the criminal who is so-called born again that no matter how many times he is baptized, he cannot be reformed. According to John 6:44, John 6:65, Romans 9:14 to 16 and Psalm 65:4, salvation depends on God's decision and God can save someone anytime he likes. And you wonder why Christianity is divided into so many sects and no one know their destiny. If you tried to put a suit and tie on the average hip hopper he still wouldn't look right. His posture is still like that of a gorilla with his shoulders bent and rounded, humped back, low-waisted, slothful, slow walkers and talkers. You are to keep at least $7 in your pocket at all times. Keep identification on you at all times. Beware of unlawful assembly. Although you and your friends may not be doing anything wrong or have any intentions of doing anything wrong, sometimes you are judged according to what things may look like not so much from what they are. Disorderly conduct is against the law. Learn how to conduct yourself in public. This means no loud talking and rowdy behavior. Don't break bottles in the streets, don't harass people as they pass by, etc. Sit in the company of the good. You are judged by the company you keep. Obelisks is one of the most prominent images from Kemet, ancient Egypt which have made its way into religious iconography. It was originally called a Tekken. The Washington Monument was completed on December 6, 1888 AD. On that day, a Freemasonic ceremony was performed to formally dedicate the memorial to George Washington. This structure is 555 feet and 5 eighths inches and is the tallest obelisk in the world. The obelisk, or Tekken, has been used for hundreds of years in countries throughout the world as a grave marker for the dead. This structure is one of the oldest symbols to represent the process of spiritual resurrection, and it was originally associated with the Kemetic Nietzsche Rauser, who became known to the Western world as the Egyptian deity Osiris. Christians have painted this picture of Mary holding Jesus' dead body after being taken down from the cross. It is a well-known picture that is shown in all churches, at art galleries, and in various types of books. This picture has no part, whatsoever, of what took place in the New Testament. Yet, years from now people have innovated that picture you see and it will become part of the scriptures as though Mary did hold Yeshua in her arms after coming down from the cross, the same way the Old and New Testament, and the Quran have been innovated. Nubia and Nubians are from Nuba, aka Havala, Genesis 2:11, son of Mizraim, and Sauda, Nuba's wife, came the names, Nubia and Sudan. Nubia was a region of ancient Africa. It covered part of what is now Sudan. Nubian extended the Nile River from the southern boundary of ancient Egypt almost to present day Khartoum, Sudan. Nubia has a story of its own, for it was plentiful in gold, ivory, ebony and other rich natural resources which attracted many to the land. Also, it was here the Nubian statues were constructed. The statues depicted gods who descended upon the earth and built the pyramids. Nubia, was also known in ancient times as Havala. They call it an unseen god, a ghost, spirit, fire, etc. Yet, what you have come to worship are spirit monsters of the necropolis like Frankenstein, Dracula, the zombie, the mummy, the werewolf, etc. I must repeat it again, Patama who people live by white magic and Nuwabian, black people should live by black magic, but they don't. When light danced on the multifaceted surface of the stone, it diffracted into seven different bands of colors, which diffused into the ray of light. This ray of light, as stated before, could cut mountains. The majority of the stones used in the pyramids was limestone, from the immediate vicinity. Certain parts, such as the lining for the passages and chambers, required a better quality of limestone from mines at Tura, which is a certain kind of limestone on the eastern bank of the Nile, a little south of modern Cairo. Expeditions also went to Aswan for granite, and also to other specially selected mines. 
Most of the stones were mined near Cairo and floated across the river on barges at the time of flooding, when the water extended to the edge of the desert. From that point, the blocks were dragged on rollers up the slope to the plateau. Meanwhile, the architects fixed the exact position of the pyramid, generally built with the sides facing the four cardinal points, as in a tetrahedron with a 19.5 degrees angle. As man progresses spiritually, tiny valves leading up to the spinal column open one by one. Eventually, the last three pairs of nerves are opened, they in turn open the force of the 12 spiritual centers located in the brain. The force of these centers floods the physical form with a spiritual power which makes man aware. This awareness therefore changes him from a human being to a son of El Elo or what we, the masters, call the Insanu Camel, a self-perfected man. He changes or transcends from mortal to immortal, making him a supreme being. Jesus was called the Word of God, Kalimachala. And, because the Quran was revealed, as Muslims teach, after the New Testament it is safe to believe that the very term Word of God is taken from John 1 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you say he is in heaven, Ecclesiastes 5-2, Quran 6-3, that is still containing him in some place or something, making him less than himself, because he is the all. When you say the creator is the all, you're saying that nothing can be added, and nothing can be taken away. Whether you know it or not, there are underground bases that are built beneath the earth's surface. However, these particular bases are not in the earth. Different countries have built underground tunnels and facilities including the Chinese, Russians, Vietnamese, Japanese and many more. Certain underground bases are largely beneath the southwestern United States. Don't think that there is only one region that has these tunnels. It is not by far the only region. Some of these tunnels and bases are so well equipped that officials and their entire families have been living there for years now, and have never come to the surface. Some of the bases are set up, where if you are standing in California, you can walk through one door and end up in Australia. Then, you can go through another door and end up in China. Some of the tunnels connect from state to state. Others connect from continent to continent. Impossible. Not hardly. Muslims would like you to believe that Jesus is only defined in the Quran as a messenger and a prophet, and is not different to all the other messengers who went before him. This is just not true, because Muhammad was not called Al-Masih, the anointer or Messiah, Jesus was, Quran 3.45, 4 to 157, 4 to 171, 4 to 172, 575, 930, 931. The concept of hell is something that was created in the hearts and minds of the authors of your Bible and Quran. Before you were informed of what and where hell was, it never crossed your mind to even think about it. So, within the pages of your scriptures, hell was born. Just as a god could not exist without the devil, heaven could not exist if there wasn't a hell. So where did hell come from? It didn't exist in Adam's, Noah's, nor Abraham's time. It is something that was fabricated so that they could capitalize off of your fear. Napoleon Bonaparte let the French occupation of 1798 AD, of Egypt. However, his attempted takeover was short-lived that it was not enough to make a real impact on Egypt. Although he did war against them. Egypt was in the hands of the Mameluk who were in conflict with the Ottomans, both being Turks. Napoleon defeated the Mamelukes at the Battle of the Pyramids of the 1798 AD, when he was expanding his area. Napoleon did not destroy or distort the faces of the pyramids. During the 8th and 9th century Abdullah Mamun son of Harun al-Rashid was the Khalifa, successor. It was at this time when the Islamic community was flourishing and there was an encouragement of intellectual pursuits. The Muslims flourished because they were robbing Egypt of her knowledge, wealth, and even stole the stones from the pyramids. Because at that time the pyramids were covered with limestone, and Muslims used these materials to build their mosques. What Christians don't do is, they don't anoint their dead after three days of death, people who have died were pickled in vinegar and wine. Even the Greeks have gone as far as sometimes using honey. Applying spices and perfumed ointments to cut down on purification was so common a practice that the English word embalming had as its original meaning, to put on bomb. However, the word is used to describe the introduction of tenets into the body to make sure that the body will be preserved. The art and techniques of embalming began in ancient Egypt. Fact is the Bible began as an oral book, meaning it was related by word of mouth, for thousands of years. According to the World Book Encyclopedia, Volume 2, page 219, as time passed, people wrote down various parts of the book. For many centuries, the Bible existed only in handwritten manuscript form. Earth is the devil's kingdom, and playground. Everything you can imagine that is in hell, you can find right here on earth now. Such as, burning in fire, to watch loved ones burn as to be in hell, people being hung upside down, the disciples of Jesus were hung upside down, being eaten alive, 
there are diseases that eat people while they are alive. For digestion you need, teeth to chop food, salivary glands to make saliva, a digestive juice, an esophagus which is the food passage to the stomach, a stomach to churn food and add digestive juice, a liver and pancreas to make digestive juices to be used in the small intestine, a gallbladder to store bile made in the liver, a duodenum to receive the bile and juices from the pancreas, a small intestine which completes digestion and sends digested foods into the bloodstream, a large intestine to store and finally dispose of waste. Jesus, the so-called spirit version, according to Luke 24 41-43, and while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish, and of a honeycomb. And he took, it, and did eat before them. The point of the conception of Yeshua, aka Jesus, being conceived of a virgin, Matthew 1 23, where it states, Behold, a virgin, Parthenos shall be with child. The Greek word Parthenos, under Strong's Greek Dictionary No. 3933, means of unknown origin, a maiden, by implication, an unmarried daughter, virgin. In a magazine entitled Nexus News Times, Volume 5, No. 3, on page 20 states, our English language Gospels tells us that Jesus' mother Mary was a virgin, and the word virgin was translated from the Greek initially but the Latin. That was because the Latin called her Virgo. It didn't mean the same thing at all. Virgo in Latin meant nothing more than a young woman. To have meant the same thing as virgin does not today, the Latin would have been Virgo intacta, that is to say, a young woman intact. The Nexus magazine also states on page 20, let's see why they call her Virgo, a young woman. Maybe they actually got something right which we've got wrong later on. We discover that the word translated to mean Virgo, a young woman, was the old Hebrew word Alma which meant a young woman. It had no sexual connotation whatever. Had Mary actually been physically Virgo intacta, the Hebrew word used would have been Bethula, not Alma. The God you worship, you have from your own heart changed from a compassionate and loving being to a monster. You tell kids if you aren't good, you're going to hell, now get your butt to church that's why I go to church. There should be a magnet in church like the pollen for the bee. The necessity to go to church should be because I know I need the honey. I shouldn't have to go to church because someone tells me, brother, you miss a Friday man, you're supposed to be in the mosque. Well, what if I don't go? Well, you're going to get burned up. That's what it comes down to. Is that identifying with your compassionate Heavenly Father? That's not my type of God. My Eli, God, doesn't say that just because he's a Christian he's going to hell, and because he's a Buddhist he's going to hell, and because he's a Hebrew he's going to hell, and because he's a Muslim he's not. That's not God, that's man's mortal nature differentiating between creatures. Look at all the things that you have learned. You have learned more than the average Muslim Imam, leader, as an Ansar, aider. You know more about the Quran, the Hadith, and history. And, you know more about the Bible than the average Christian. You know more about the Torah than the average pale or black Jew, more about 120 degrees than a 5% or black Muslim. Now you no longer have an interest in any of these so-called holy books and self-righteous leaders. You have gone to something higher. You will be able to tell people all that you have learned, everything about religion. You will become a master teacher, as myself. 